Fellas, AC here. Welcome to the 300th episode. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I've been away. Work, basically. So this episode has been due for more than two weeks. And I know that you guys have been waiting for it. I've been getting messages on my Instagram, on my YouTube channel comments. And I've not been able to respond to a lot of comments recently. Work has been absolutely brutal. I'm sorry. I'll try and respond to whatever I can. But I can't promise because work's gone really crazy. In terms of the amount of work and the amount of time I'm having to give it, it's just phenomenally high. But anyways, I finally decided to do my 300th episode and this is going to be a special one. I've decided to do a video episode on the art of perfumery, the celebration of the art of perfumery. I want to do this because I am a connoisseur. I love a fragrance which tells me a beautiful story, which is opulent and rich, it transforms. But as I said before in many of my episodes, I like all fragrances, yeah? If it offers me something, if it's not to my taste and liking, I'll, I don't review it. I don't do any negative reviews. I've done probably one or two negative reviews. They've been exceptionally popular, so I'll do a, a few more negative reviews, but I try and avoid it because in my life I have a motto. If I don't like something, I ignore it. I don't bother with negativity. I love to be a positive person. I try to spread positivity. If I don't have anything nice to say about something, I probably wouldn't say anything about it. That's my nature. Anyways, perfumery as an art. This episode is going to be a long one because I'm going to be expressing myself to my heart's content without bothering about the amount of time it takes. So I've got 10 for you. They're mostly 10 out of 10 fragrances. In my earlier reviews, some I have reviewed. So in my earlier reviews, I might have given it a nine. I don't know, I can't remember. So it might have changed to 10. So there could be a slight discrepancy there, but then over the period of time, I might have upgraded it. There's a slight possibility of that. Not all the fragrances in this video have been reviewed by myself. So I'm, I'm gonna start with one fragrance which I haven't reviewed. And all are 10 out of 10. So this is not a sort of a countdown. So just randomly picked stuff, but I want you to enjoy this video and get some of these fragrances because you ought to try it, you ought to experience the finest perfumery that's possible. This is the first part, I'll do a few more. So the first one, now the first one is an Italian fragrance, right? But the Italian fragrance house is trying to do a Middle Eastern stuff, oud. And it's done it so beautifully, it's probably one of the finest oud based fragrances and it's going to be in everybody's list. It's outrageously popular. It's a fabulous fragrance. Some of you might have guessed it. It's Acqua di Parma Colonia Oud. Now Oud is something that I don't like much because most of it smells the same to me. It's the same woody smell. Some have barnyardy smells to me. I'm not, um, you know, sledging Oud. To me, it doesn't really light my fire or float my boat. This one, love it. Absolutely love it. Because it's not only oud. It's got this amazing resinous floral structure along with a nutty leather. And it's done in an Italian style, cologne style, but don't be fooled. I don't know about the current formulation. This formulation is an absolute beast mode. Yeah, It says cologne concentrate. Don't be fooled. Yeah, Anything in the brown bottle from Marco di Parma, to my knowledge, and I've got four of them. I haven't reviewed, I've only reviewed two of them, uh, are not slouches. They have tremendous performance. This one, oh my God. This is an endearing fragrance. The more you wear it, the more you like it, the more you're drawn towards it. It's just one of those fragrances which has to be applauded for the absolute perfection in a bottle that it is. Yeah, leather, as I said, the most important thing for me is how oud has been balanced with a note of orange and a mirrors. Have you ever smelt a mirrors? Have you had the pleasure or the good fortune of smelling a mirrors flower? If you smell it, you will know. I was in a forest last year. That's the first time I actually saw a mirrors. I smelled a mirrors before I saw it in nature. The whole forest patch was completely covered in the smell of mirrors. That's what a mirrors is. So they had to pick a mirrors because oud is all overpowering, right? Oud overpowers everything. 
So they've taken the mirrors, it's beautiful resinous, outstanding, just an outstanding Italian cologne style oud fragrance, remarkable, just remarkable. With outstanding performance, expensive but an outright 10 on 10, right? Can't comment on the latest um, uh, reincarnation of this bottle. The bottle has gone black, I believe. I don't know about that. I haven't tried it. But this one is a 10 out of 10. It's an outstanding oud. Superb. I'll do a full review very soon. Just a collector's delight. Next one on my list is a fragrance which is from the yesteryears. There is hardly any talk about it. But let me start introducing this fragrance to you. Let me build up to it. Now, one of the most, it's a leather sheepra, and one of the most famous leather sheepras, most talked about leather sheepras is Sheepra Palatine by MDCI. Everybody praises it. In fact, there are some rumors at the moment about uh, Sheepra Palatine being reformulated because there's a difference in color. But I've spoken to the MDCI guys in Harrods and they said it's just a dye which has been changed. I can't confirm or deny because I haven't smelled the vintage version of Sheepra Palatine. But I smelled the current version, and the moment I smelt it, I was reminded about the fragrance I'm just going to show you, right? This fragrance is an absolute thoroughbred, yeah? It is by Estee Lauder, and the name of the fragrance is Azuri, and this one is Pure Parfum. Now, very hard to get hold of. If you ever see this in Pure Parfum concentration, look at the bottle, remember the bottle. If you ever see this, take it, because... If you're a lo lover of leather sheepers, you can't do anything better than this. This thing takes sheep palatine and shreds it into tiny strips and dumps it into the recycling bin. Right? Sheep palatine absolutely stands no chance in front of a Zuri. Right? This thing is a thoroughbred. So, remember one thing. To ride a thoroughbred, you have to be trained. So if you're an untrained person who only enjoys designer fragrances, don't even bother. Because you need to have a serious amount of stomach to even enjoy this. This thing is, as I said, it's a thoroughbred, all right? So what is it? It is basically a very aldehydic, oak mossy, leather sheep. I have not reviewed it yet. I will review it. And it's just superb in range depth and scale it's ginormous this fragrance is absolutely huge and as i said sheepra sheepra are my favorite genre i love sheepra and i love it even more when it's combined with a solid dose of leather that's what this is heavy leather good leather very well done well exclusive actually if you ever get hold of this bottle take it whatever the price you'll never regret it as long as you know how to handle vintage mask, this was released for the ladies. I can't believe this. I mean, there is nothing about this fragrance which is feminine. Absolutely nothing. So, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Next on my list is a fragrance which reminds me of Diwali. Why? Because, you know, Diwali, all right? It's my favorite festival. I do a special episode every year on Diwali night. Because, you know, when you see Diwali, it's all about, it's celebrating on the darkest night of that month. And it's just light against backdrop of dark, you know, darkest night and light. This next fragrance I'm going to show you is exactly that. It's like a Diwali night in a bottle. It is, well, let's show you. It's an extrait concentration. It is Rose de Teff by Peris Monte Carlo. Now, this is a house which doesn't get a lot of talk, but all the fragrances they've done in extrait formulation are collectibles. Trust me, I've got two of these. I'll probably get a few more. If you like rose, you have to have rose de Teff extract. It comes in two concentrations. I haven't tried the other one, which is Eau de Parfum. Slightly cheaper than this is excruciatingly expensive. And why is it so expensive? Because it contains real Teff extract. Uh, extract. Now, I've understood. Okay, let's talk about Teff. Taf is a region in Saudi Arabia. You thought nothing grows in Saudi Arabia. There's this region, a little pocket region known as Taf, and it comes with a special rose variety. It's a 30 petal rose. It's outstanding. The moment I smelled rose de Taf, I knew that I smelled something amazing. And I tried everything. Bulgarian rose, Damascus rose, rose de May, the French rose. I tried all rose because I'm a new convert to rose. And the moment I smelled, 
I like Damascus rose as well. And the moment I smelled rose de teff, I knew that this has a little dose of Damascus rose as well. So it's lemony, buttery. The feel of the fragrance is like butter, melting butter. And as you know, rose melts hearts. This fragrance is the most romantic and lush fragrance in my collection. And it's just amazing. It's just, it just takes over my senses. It's like, as I said, it's like a Diwali night. Light luminosity in background of the darkest night of the, of that month. It's just amazing. Yeah, Rose de Def X-ray must have for a serious connoisseur. Next one in my list is again one of those fragrances that just reeks of celebration. Not reeks, reeks is the wrong word. It's just is the moment you smell it, that's what I'm wearing today. The moment you smell it, it lifts your spirits up as if you're going to a, a bash, proper bash, you know, party. And it just smells like party. It's so profound. The moment you smell it, it's so profound, you know, it just it just stays with you. It's dark and bright at the same time. It is Fidelis by Histoire de Parfum. Now, I own four fragrances from this house. None of them are less than nine. This one is an exceptional oud. Again, I don't like barnyardy oud, and this one isn't. This is Laotian oud. It's very chocolatey, creamy, powdery, lush, rich, and it's coupled with the most outstanding note of coffee and cardamom. It is stunning. I've done a full review of this one. This is actually the first fragrance in this list that I've reviewed. You should check it out, you know? Fidelis is outstanding. Look at the color juice. It is an outstanding fragrance. It smells like celebration. It's a nighttime fragrance. It's a red carpet fragrance. You have to be dressed beautifully to enjoy this fragrance. I tell you, Fidelis is a must-have for party anime. Next on my list is a Jaffa. I've reviewed this fragrance. This fragrance just is on a different scale, you know? When I first smelt it, it just is one of those rebellious fragrances. It starts off smelling something, ends up being something else. It's called Line Fan Terrible, Terrible Child. There's a note here. They're basically, this is this is confidence personified. This is a fragrance that basically from a parfumer who's very confident in what he's trying to do. I think it's got guyakwood. I can't remember. It smells like guyakwood. Guyakwood, sandwood, and fruits and dates and then the, the <clears throat> excuse me the terrible child which is cumin nobody likes cumin right <laughs> try this fragrance outstanding it's it's a glorious fragrance this thing is lush rich deep complex some of you guys have gone ahead and bought this on my insistence and i tell you what they have not been disappointed line fan terrible is if you like orientals it's a must have you should try it and Java fragrances are just on a different scale. So done five, five to come. Next on my list is a fragrance that is a gardener's delight. If you're a gardener, if you're a nature lover, you're gonna love this fragrance. It's also a fragrance that, you know, just evokes watercolor, brilliant watercolor or brilliant artist's impression. Okay, I wanna show you something. If, if Monet was a perfumer, this is what he would have created. It's green, it's watery, it's evocative of nature. It's just superb. And the name doesn't do it justice. It is Frederick Ma, French lover. If you if you take this name seriously, you'd be surprised. There's no nothing French or nothing, nothing lovery about this fragrance. This is the smell of nature. Angelica Galbanum. Yeah, two notes. Galbanum is just outstanding. Angelica, even better green, um, slightly bitter, fizzy, lemony, sweet, all at the same time. This is just a masterclass in perfumery. You know, you have to really smell this to know what I'm talking about. It's so unusual, so beautiful, so fine. Just puts a smile on my face. As I said, you know, it's a masterpiece of a fragrance, green fragrance. I'm going to do a full review soon. French lover. What a fragrance this is, guys. Oh, Dominique Ropion, by the way. So, six down, four to come. Next on my list is a fragrance which is, which belongs to a man who is the boss, undisputed boss. And rumor has it that this is basically a fragrance which is Putin's signature scent. Some of you might have guessed it. I don't know how much that is true, but I'd be, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if this was 
Putin's signature fragrance because this oozes unbridled corrupt power. I wouldn't say corrupt, unbridled power. Let's not judge. <clears throat> we, we, I'll leave it to you. Um, the fragrance is a masterpiece. It was created in 1997 or 1999. It's by House, which I respect a lot. It is an amouage. It is amouage gold. This fragrance doesn't get a lot of talk. If you go to Fragrantica, there are some lost souls criticizing this fragrance because they can't get their heads around, right, around this fragrance. What is this? This is heavy, indolic, animalic musk, right? <clears throat> Along with musk, there's sweat. Then there's oak moss and there's rose hip. Rose hip has very little use in perfumery. Rose hip oil has a lot of medicinal properties. So I'm going to do a full review anyway, so let me not spoil the thing. Not, not, let me not spoil the party. But this fragrance is unapologetic, mean, masculine fragrance. This is one of those fragrances that you would want to wear to make a statement. You wouldn't get any compliments. It probably wouldn't even impress you if you're not as experienced as some of us are. Just like Azuri. This is a thoroughbred. You have to be trained to ride it, right? Amouage Gold. Next one is even meaner. This fragrance is a vetiver fragrance and I'm a vetiver lover. I've got more than 30 vetiver fragrances in my collection. This fragrance beats all of them hands down and with a hammer blow, right? This fragrance is a thug. It's called Sultan Vetiver by Nishane. This has got four different types of vetiver in it. It's got leather, Asian vetiver, Indian vetiver, this vetiver, that vetiver. I've done a full review. When I did the review, I was so taken over by the scale of this fragrance, the range of this fragrance, the kind of smell this is, that I heaped praise upon praise upon praise of this fragrance. But the thing is, always remember this. This is not an easy fragrance to wear. As I said, it's even more meaner than Amouage Gold. But why am I praising it? Because of the range. This is the kind of range you don't expect from vetiver. This thing is the Cengiz Khan of fragrances. Yeah, mean but astonishingly huge. Everybody wants to know about Cengiz Khan, right? That's what this is. This is the Cengiz Khan of vetiver fragrances. What range, you know? When you spray it, you'll be in a different world. You'll realize what vetiver can do. Vetiver normally is portrayed as a soft, grassy, lemony thing. <laughs> Try, Try Sultan vetiver. You'll be knocked out. Okay, next one. Last two left, right? Next fragrance is an absolute epic of a fragrance. The moment you spray this, you are basically making a statement that I am here because I deserve to be here. I've made my way, way, way up. It is a Roja. I've done a full review. It is oligarch. This fragrance is exactly what it says on the tin. Oligarch. Rich resourceful, dominant, and one of a kind. How many oligarchs do you know? What a fragrance this is, guys. It just puts a smile on my face because when I want to smell something special, when I really, really, really want to make a statement, I bring out oligarch. It's profoundly self-confident. This is one of those fragrances which says, listen, it doesn't matter what you think about me. I am because I deserve to be here. Oligarch is just on a different scale. The 28 notes, I believe, um, it's a kind of a floral, fruity shipra. Again, shipra, right? So juniper berries, citrus notes, vetiva, floral notes, the ton tons of notes. You can check out my full review. I did it with a lot of heart. This is an outstanding fragrance. Oligarch, every bit oligarch, yeah? Last one. Some of you might have guessed it. I call the next fragrance the Gamica of perfumery. I coined that term about two years ago when I did a video on niche fragrances. This to me is the Gamica. It's so large, it's so evocative, it's so, it'll trans, it transfixes you. Some of you have had the good fortune of trying it. Outstanding. Again, a leather shibra. It is a Gala, it's Derby. This fragrance is basically, what can I say, man? Every time I wear it, I get something new about this fragrance. It's supposed to be a leather barbershoppy shipra, right? But every time I wear it, 
It takes me somewhere else. It gives me some other ideas. It interests me. It intrigues me. It's like standing in front of Guernica and staring at it. It's a masterpiece. Bar none. Right? I have to review this fragrance, but I tell you, if you can ever get hold of this, if you like masculines, get hold of Guernica. Get hold of Derby. My God, what a fragrance this is. I hope you enjoyed this 300 episode. 300th episode. Do give it a like. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.